Hilton Football Auditorium, which is located in the George Yoculano and William C. Perry Football Wing of the John A. Lally Athletics Complex. <laughs> uh, t today we welcome the newest members of the Orange community, Fran Brown, his wife Tiara, their two sons, Fran Jr. and Braden, and their daughter Ivy Ann. And I'm just so glad Coach Brown and his family now call Syracuse home. So welcome. <laughs> My job is to quickly say thank you, especially to the search committee who made a great decision in bringing Coach Brown to Syracuse. And that, of course, starts with Athletic Director John Wildhack, with Trustee Steve Valentine, with a small group of our university leaders, and with two former players, Tori Ball, who is also now our Deputy Athletics Director of Marketing, and Joe Burton. Uh, thank you for all your work on the selection process. So, so. I, I had the opportunity to spend time with Coach Brown last week. I went into the conversation knowing that he is an outstanding coach, an incredible recruiter, and a wise, widely respected leader. What I really wanted to know more about was his relationships with and his attitude towards his students. And I learned this. Uh, coach Brown is passionately committed to his players winning in all aspects of life. He talked about his players growing as men, personally and professionally, about them embracing this community, and about them being successful on and off the field. And it's clear this is not just talk. Uh, after last week's announcement, so many of Coach Brown's current and former players have been talking about how he impacted them on and off the field and contributed to their success in life. One Georgia player told us that Syracuse is getting a tremendous coach, but even more so a tremendous person. A tremendous coach, but even more so a tremendous person. Uh, that's the kind of person we've been fortunate so many times to have in the past and now in coaching at Syracuse. That's what we'll have in Coach Brown in our future. Congratulations, Coach, and welcome to Syracuse University. Please go on. Morning, everyone. First, I want to welcome Coach Fran and Tierra and Fran Jr. and Braden and Ivy to Syracuse University in Central New York. Welcome to everyone in attendance today and those watching, whether you're on the ACC network, Qs.com, or on other platforms. We appreciate your passion and your interest in Syracuse football. As the Chancellor referenced in his remarks, our search committee was spectacular. And I, too, want to thank Herm Frazier, Candace Campbell-Jackson, Steve Ballantyne, Class of 83, Trustee, Joe Burton, Class of 01, former football player, and Tori Ball, undergrad 11, graduate 12, also former football player. Our process was exhaustive uh, and very, very thorough. And I apologize to all of them for totally infringing upon their Thanksgiving weekend. But it turned out to be time well spent. And as always, let me add my thanks to the Chancellor for his support and his guidance. I'm deeply appreciative. We had a very strong list of candidates, but Coach Brown emerged as the right person at this time to lead our football program. What stood out about Coach Fran? Number one, his detailed vision for all aspects of the program was incredibly impressive. When I say detailed, I mean it was down to minute details. His vision matched his passion and his commitment. His commitment developing a young men to achieve their full potential at Syracuse and as people of players and to prepare them for life after Syracuse. Coach has been on the ground for less than 24 hours. I've seen that commitment in action. It's more than just words. I've seen his commitment in action. He met with the team yesterday afternoon, and his first meeting after that was a meeting with our academic support staff. That shows commitment. I spoke to a number of people about Coach Fran, current college coaches, individuals on college staffs, NFL coaches, NFL club personnel, 
And it was interesting because their comments were very consistent. They all said that Coach Fran is a great communicator. He's authentic, builds meaningful relationships with his players, and develops his players. He's a student of the game, knows the game, is a tireless worker, an dynamic recruiter with strong ties to the Northeast, the DMV region, and other areas of the country. And they all told me what a great family man Coach Fran is, devoted to his wife, Tiara, and children, Fran Jr., Braden, and Ivy. Coach Fran's character and values are a perfect match for our university and for our community. He spent the last 15 years preparing for today. His experience at Temple, at Baylor, at Rutgers, in Georgia, have him well prepared to lead our program. I'm excited about the future of our football program. I ask and encourage the Central New York community to welcome and support Coach Fran and his family. Orange alumni and fans around the world, you can support Coach Fran in a variety of ways. And to our football alums, I ask each and every one of you to fully support Coach Fran, his staff, and our team. You play a huge role in getting this program to where we all want it to be. A new era of Syracuse football begins today. Please join me in welcoming Head Coach Fran Brown. Just looking at that alone, Jim Brown, Fran Brown got a chance to have that on there. That's just a blessing alone right there on his own. Um, first off, you know, as everyone to get up and say, and I truly mean this, I want to thank God, man. And I think we all should because we all here today. We all got a chance to wake up and um, just thank God for giving me the opportunity to be up, be here. I want to thank my beautiful wife, my sons, just my family. Looking at her, she might make me cry, so I ain't looking over there no more. <laughs> but uh, as I go through this, guys, I'm going to be a little different than everybody else was because I'm going to kind of speak from my heart, try to put a little speech together, but that thing usually never works for me. You know, I always speak from my heart, and it just comes out real. But I do want to thank the Chancellor. Several, I really appreciate the conversation you had with me. It means a lot. Our AD, John Wildhack, I don't think there's he's second to none. Just the way it's thorough, you were through the process. The uh, committee. The way you guys like talked to me in there just made me feel comfortable, made me feel that this was home. It wasn't just me trying to sort the job. They were trying to sort the right coach. And they asked all the right questions, and they were picking my brain apart and constantly going. So what you guys done in there, I really appreciate that. It will never go on for God. Uh, Herm, just being from where I'm from, uh, I'm from Camden, New Jersey. Herm's from Philly. So just knowing someone that was right there, being that close and being able to do that, and him telling me how he felt this was home and understanding and knowing what it's like growing up in Germantown and North Philly and being in those spots and me being in Camden, I said, wow, if he can make it home, then I know I could come and make it home. So um, I appreciate the athletic department, just all you guys that stood behind me. Thanks a lot, guys. Now I'm going to get into just the coaches because I always want to go back, play little league football. All my little league coaches, man, I appreciate all y'all. It's too many of you guys. Y'all kept changing every year. So I can't remember every name, but Coach Drip, you my guy. So I want to thank him, my high school football coach, Mark Pease, Todd McNair, and all those guys that were there. Uh, Western Carolina, Kent Briggs, Jeff Collins, Matt Rule. Just without you guys coming to recruit me, you did a lot. Uh, Kevin Coyle, who was the secondary coach at the Bengals when I had a little short stink. Even though they cut me, he kept calling me. He said, it was something about you, friend. I just got to keep talking to you. I want to always talk to you, and we kept in touch a lot. And I was on a hope, swearing I was going to get the practice call because he kept hitting me up, but he messed up my uh, Hall of Fame career. I was supposed to be in the Hall of Fame. Man. <laughs> but that's my guy. Hopefully I get to, you guys get to see him soon. Um, and I was just getting to this, man, just me having the opportunity of being here, guys. 
I'm going to bust my butt, y'all. I'm going to bust my butt daily, and I promise you that. I was taught that, and I want to go back to a story of why I'm going to bust my butt. As the chancellor was talking to me, Mr. Severu said, friend, I know you could recruit. I know you could do all this stuff. That's great. But what about the diamonds in the rough? He said, what about those guys that people overlook? What are you going to do with them? And I sat back and I said, how am I going to forget about me? Like, I can't forget about me. My mother had me at 13 years old, turning 14. By the age of 21, she had four boys. So you're talking about hard? I was the dirty kid that they tried to crack jokes on. I was the guy that went to school, didn't have all the stuff everybody else had. But what I knew that I wasn't going to do, because I got an uncle named Charles Brown, he told me, don't ever, ever, ever allow your situations to dictate your outcome. You make the best of them. You dominate. You get up and you walk every single day with the next foot forward. And I bust my butt. A lot of tears. I got a lot of pain inside of me, guys. This isn't just for me. This is for the community that when I rolled through here with Tori, as we got together, we went through the community. And I said, oh, I see why one of them coaches I asked, would he come here? He said, I'm not sure about the neighborhood. I said, this is the neighborhood I need to be in. This is the neighborhood that I can make a change. This is the neighborhood that these guys are going to be behind the program, and the program will be behind the community. So one thing I can promise you and assure you that where I'm from, it's just like this. I understand and I know what it's like to be from this situation. So we're going to do everything we can. And if you're involved in, with Syracuse, we're going to make this community the best community in the world. So that's one thing that I'm about myself to when it comes to the community service of being able to do that. I'll talk to you about why Syracuse. Because everybody asks that, you want to know why Syracuse. Well, the reason why is because when I was in the ninth grade, we just got to high school. They got all the kids from the city of Camden, all the little league. We all got on the bus and we rode to Rutherford Stadium. And Donovan Darius was playing. So we all got a chance to go see uh, Syracuse play against Wisconsin. Now, Ron Dane went on to win the Heisman, but his butt got shut down that day. <laughs> and we was all happy to see Donovan. I got a chance to beat Donovan McNabb, got to meet all these great coaches. So as you're going to continue to hear me, that's my envision of Syracuse. That's what I saw. That's what I want. So I'm going to continuously talk about the Pascalone, Pascalonian De Leon era. Because like, I got a chance to work with De Leon, and I seen how he worked, and I tried to mimic it. And I could never be as good of a coach as De Leon was. Like, he forgot more football than I know. So I'll never be on that level of it. But what I do, and I'm going to promise him, because my wife still talks to Miss Barb, we're going to bust our butt to get this thing back that way. That's what I'm looking for, guys. This isn't about me. This isn't about all that. This is about bringing the tradition of the great football that was here before me. And before I got here, I got to go back to that era. I made the call to Pascaloni. I said, Coach, how would you feel if I became the uh, head coach at Syracuse? He said, well, I haven't been there in 20 years. I mean, I, I don't really have a say in that. I talked to John. He's a good guy. I just went back for Dwight Freeney's uh, Hall of Fame thing. But just the fact that you're calling, that's commendable. I appreciate that. And I said, well, would you be okay with it? He said, if they pick you, you got my blessings. I went full tilt after the job after that, guys. Hey, listen, when you looked at that list, you ain't see Fran Brown on that list. You just seen a couple players say it. I went full tilt to make sure I had the job because I knew that if you didn't hire me now, I would have to wait. And my opportunity wouldn't be there. And they said, if there's an opportunity in place, I'm going to take it. And I took full advantage of it. I reached out to Mr. John. He returned my call right away like most people wouldn't do. So the president, I mean, the AD returned the call. Yeah, I hit him up. I said, hey, what's going on? It's Fran Brown. The best way to find out about me, Fran Brown is through myself. Everyone could talk to you and say all these things about you, but I know me. He called me and he said, we got about five, ten minutes, Fran. I got a lot of meetings to go on. Fifty minutes later, we were hanging up. <laughs> we got a chance to talk. He said, I want to meet with you again. Oh, he called me on Thanksgiving. What do you think about tomorrow sometime? I said, what about the night? <laughs> so Thanksgiving night, we talked. We were supposed to be on there half an hour. Hour and a half, we hung up. You know, and it was just the right vision. Like, everything that he wants for the, for the athletes here is the same thing that I think about on a daily basis. See, like, I was always able to go out and recruit and get the best players and get them, but it wasn't because I was saying all this stuff or I was selling all this stuff at Temple. It was because of the relationships. It was me continuously talking to him, talking to him about life, helping young men become closer to the man above. Like, I was told ever since I was a little kid, the reason I'm here now is because my grandmother, before she passed, I would always hear, Jesus lives in your heart. Jesus lives in your heart. And I live that, and I know that, and I believe that. So that's how I recruit. I recruit just being genuine. I'm telling the kids the truth. And I got them to come to school because they wanted to get closer to Christ or Allah or whoever it is you may believe in. They want to get a degree. And they don't just want to get a degree. They want to be educated. You know, come to school and get educated. 
I'm telling all the kids now, the reason you should come to Syracuse is because just because you come in here, you're going to be successful for the rest of your life. Like, I just held up a jersey with Tim Brantley's number on it. I'm from Camden, New Jersey, God. Those things don't usually happen unless you're willing to go push. And the same way I'm talking to you is the same way I recruit. It's the same way I'm going to be every day. Same way I'm at practice. I'm going to be an animal at practice. I told the guys yesterday, nobody here has more energy than me. I never stop. I'm up all night. I'm going to work my butt off. And I can promise you and assure you that what we're going to do here is going to be big things. It's going to be big. But I'm going to need everybody to be involved with us to make sure you're constantly supporting the show. Don't tell me you're a fan and then you're not really helping to be a fan. Don't say you won a championship, but you're giving six and six effort. You know, we got to make sure that we're putting out what we're supposed to put out. So, like, nowadays we're involved in it where it comes and I yell. All the different things that there is. And, guys, if you play here and you're alumni, I don't need your money. I need your presence. I need those guys to see the history that was before them. I need them to want to be able to mimic what happened before them. The money and all those things will come when the time is right. I want your guys' presence. I want your heart because you're going to get my heart. You're going to get every bit of me that you can get for the entire time I'm here. Now, listen, guys, like I told you earlier, I'm from Camden. So every coach get up here and say, this is home. I'm never going nowhere. And then three years later, he's trying to get a new job or a new contract. Guys, I come from welfare, baby. I'm good. I don't got to have that family first card no more. I'm here for life. I promise you that. I got that little girl. Until she turns about 12, 13 years old, she too, that's when I'm going to step away and go take care of my daughter. But you got my word. My name is all I got. I've been taught that my whole life. I will be here. I will bust my butt to be the coach. I watched other teams in the ACC a few years ago win national championships here. So it's going to happen here. We just got to all be on the same page. We got to all push. If you coming around, you're allowed to come to me and complain. If you don't come around, I don't want to hear nothing you say. <laughs> Makes sense. Just make sure you're around. Uh, I'm going to keep going on a little bit. I'm going to talk to you guys about my DNA traits and for our team and who we are. I hate when it does that. I'm going to talk about my uh, DNA traits, though. So I talk to the guys, and we talk about discipline, right, and then the mission. You know, and that's all we worry about is the mission in front of us, guys. I talked to guys yesterday, and we talked about just not really focusing on September. I want them to focus on this week. Like, I write a schedule. I'm a detailed schedule guy. My wife tells me, oh, you know, this only because of football. She's jealous because she's a nurse, and I might be more detailed than she is. So we writing all this down. I do it every single night, guys, and I make sure that I'm ready for the next day, and I dominate that day. So I'm teaching my guys about 168. That's how many hours in a week. I don't need you to be ready in September right now. I just need them to be ready to practice for the bowl game. And then when January gets here, we're going to dominate January. And then we're going to dominate February. And before you know it, we're just making little climbs. And we're catching them inch by inch by inch by inch. And that's what we'll be about. But our DNA traits, we're going to say dart. You're going to see a lot of darts around, darts going all over. And we're going to make sure we're throwing them. And if you're involved in IL like they were talking about, we might throw you a big dart. So you can be there for it. But it's detailed, accountable, relentless, and tough. And I'm going to continuously say that. Are you detailed? Are you accountable? Are you relentless? And are you tough? And you can do that in all aspects of your life. I learned to do that with my prayer. My kids will tell you every single day, it's not a day that won't go by that they're not going to get a prayer from me. That makes sense? Academically, you can go to class and dominate in the classroom. It's tough and it's hard to get up early and go sit in the first two rows, as I told them they have to do. That's something that we're going to make sure we get done. Got to make sure we're on point when it's doing that. On the football field, I know you're going to give me your all if you're doing that academically, if you're being deta detailed with your family, with the people that you love and that you care about, you know. So it's a lot to say that I could keep going on and running through, but um, like I told you, guys, I'm looking for that Pascaloni De Leon era, man. I want to bring that back, and I hope that you guys want that back. I'm ready to have fun. We are going to run the ball. We are going to play the good defense. We're going to stop the run. We're going to hit, and actually everybody's going to ask what offense you're going to run, whatever they can't stop. <laughs> That's how I look at it, you know. Um, with that being said, I hope I hit everything that I needed to hit. Um, once again, Chancellor, Tory Ball, my man Tory, I don't know where you at, but this would not have been possible today without you. Bro, I appreciate you and your wife. You guys are just thankful, man. From Athens, too, so he made it just comfortable because I was just down in Athens. He there in Athens, so, like, yo, I really appreciate you. I mean, he even got me right with the tie, yo. I had this Brooks brother. He said, nah, I can't do that, friend. Can't wear that. Um, Guys, I do know how to win, y'all. I went to Camden High School. 
So I'll just tell you this real quick. Before I got to came to high school, we wasn't all that great in football, right? We used to lose to Wilson all the time. When I got to high school, we didn't lose no more. All right, so now I get to college. I work my way through. I go to Hudson Valley Community College one year, get my associates, go to Western Carolina, get to play, picked up, get cut. I did all those things to say this, guys. I got to uh, Georgia. I know how to win, but it's hard. It is really hard. We need the support of all of you guys on that social media, everywhere you can constantly be on us. To win, it's hard. It's not just those 120 guys on the team or the 10 full-time coaches or the 35 assistants. It's the entire fan base. You got to dig in. We got to lock in and all be ready for this. For us to go win, we all got to do, do something that we've never done before. We can't keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. That's the definition of insane. All of you guys look pretty, pretty sane to me right now. So let's just make sure that we lock in, guys, and we're willing to change. If you want change, then we got to change it. You guys want championships. Let's be all together. Let's be on the same page. God willing, this thing work itself the way it's supposed to be, and we're going to go and win. I appreciate you guys. All right, thank you, Coach. So we do have some time for some questions from the members of the media. We do have some microphones. Uh, when you ask your question, if you could, so Coach Brown can get to know you, uh, let him know your name and the media outlet that you represent. And so we'll start with our first question. Brent. Hi, Coach. Uh, welcome. We've heard so much about recruiting, but of course NIL is a big part of the discussion in, in college football today. Uh, what's your plan to kind of balance those two and, and just kind of uh, bring that to your approach here at Syracuse? Well, um, I wasn't recruiting just with my looks when I was at Georgia, so I totally understand NIL. Uh, we, got, we got a good plan. We're going to talk to guys. We're, we're trying to do some things to help our entire team first, and then we'll be able to build when it comes to the outside of guys coming in. We understand the caliber of player that we want. And uh, we got some things. We got some alumni that are like great and involved and want to be involved. You know, we got a, bunch, a couple different uh, NIL places that we kind of get our stuff from. But I can't really just tell you like what's my plan NIL because each kid gets something different. You know, everybody's different. Like I me, mean, we don't make the same amount of money, so I couldn't tell you like what each guy gonna get. But what I can tell you is that we we are ready for NIL. We are ready to compete, and we're gonna compete as long as like we said a little bit earlier, everybody be willing to help. Hi, Coach. Uh, Steven Fonte with uh, Channel 9, the ABC here in Syracuse. Congratulations on the job. Uh, to play off Brent's question about recruiting, NIL aside, what is your message to recruits, and, and does the sales pitch change at all from, from Georgia to Syracuse, or is it essentially the same sales pitch? No, it's really the same thing because like, you can't – I don't really have a recruiting pitch. I just got, do you want to be successful? Do you want to become a man? Do you want to be a good father? you want to be a good husband? And when you're asking those questions and they can continuously see you really showing that on a day-to-day -day basis, then it becomes like authentic, you know, and I'm constantly calling them, constantly talking to them. But I'm building genuine relationships. I'm not just talking to you real quick and, hey, you know how you'll say somebody and I don't remember your name. Now I'm going to know your name. I'm going to know your grandma. I'm going to know your aunt. I'm going to know your cousin. I'm going to know your friend that passed away four years ago that you cared about because I'm going to make sure that I'm detailed with everything and write it down because I think the most important thing to that kid is him. So in order for me to have him trust in me, I need to understand and know him. So, like, I don't think the picture changed. I think we're going to recruit. I'm going to recruit a different athlete, you know, and I love our team. I looked at those guys. But I'm going to recruit depth. I'm going to recruit difference makers. Um, I'm really not afraid of no coach in the country. So whether it's a G, I don't care about that. You know what I mean? So whatever it is, we're going head to head with whoever it becomes. So we're ready to compete. We're ready to recruit. Coach, Mike McAllister from Sports Illustrated. What is your approach going to be recruiting-wise from a geographic standpoint? What key areas you're going to try to hit? Well, first off, we're going to take care of our, our, our backyard. So from Canada to DMV, I told Coach Smart and them before I left, hey, you got all these guys now because out of respect of, you know, down there where I was at, um, you guys got the players now. Don't come back up north. <laughs> and he laughed at me and giggled. He said, yeah, I ain't wasting my time no more. But uh, we'll be from Canada through the DMV. Um, you know, we're going to have little spots where we can spot recruit because I've been in Florida. 
Um, I recruited well there. I've done a good job in Texas. I mean, on the West Coast, you know, I was always told later I got an uncle that's around and he's funny. He always say, Neff, earth's your turf. So it don't really matter, but we're going to take care of our backyard from the Canada all the way down. You know, I think that that's where they won in the past with Pascalone and DeLeon. They truly won in Connecticut, New Jersey. They went to the DMV and got some good players, and they spot recruited Florida and brought some good players down, Philadelphia. So I'm going to follow that same blueprint because it worked. They had a lot of pros, so I'm going to follow that blueprint. Coach. Josh Crawford, Sports Illustrated as well, uh, black man. Um, talk about the success that you've had in the high school ranks, obviously with the emphasis and it raised the importance of the, the portal. Do you think it's a one-to-one -one translation with how you win recruiting high school guys versus portal guys? I don't really understand your whole question, to be honest. The beginning part, you had me off, so you might have to ask me that again. Can you ask that again? You know, with the success that you've had recruiting guys, you know, high schoolers, with the increased emphasis on recruiting out of the portal, do you think it's a one-to-one -one translation with how you recruit 18, 19-year-olds out of high school versus 22, 23-year-old guys out of the portal? Same, man. They're all kids. I ain't become a man until I was, like, last week, too. I become a man. I mean, let her tell it. But uh, it's the same message. I mean, your message is your message. Like, you can't sit there and go tell this one kid this one thing and another one another. I mean, now a kid in the portal that was at another school. See, I think that everybody all is ready for the portal, but you got to be careful with the portal now. They are leaving. I'm saying they are leaving now, unless there's situations where they were ran out, where that happens, and different things when it comes to the kid's mind and wasn't able to adapt right, and maybe he can adapt better around me. Maybe I'm a better fit for as the head coach. Then uh, we'll go to the portal then. But I believe in high school. I believe in developing. I was developed. You know, kids are developed, and I think you get more when you take the lot time in the long run. I don't really want to hit the portal unless I know for a one-year guy, unless, like, we talked about it and we said, if he a pro and we know he's getting drafted and the relationships that we have with maybe people in his family from the past and things like that, then we'll take a one-year. But we want two years because we got to really develop that dart. You know, I want to make sure that guys understand and know what being detailed, accountable, relentless, and tough are about. So, like, we got to develop that. So it just depends. But it's the same exact message, buddy. It's no different. I'm not going to talk to you and the guy from Sports Illustrated next to you any different. I'm going to be the same guy. Yeah. Coach, welcome to Syracuse. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. I spoke with Kirby Smart yesterday, and he said Braden had the toughest kind of uh, place when you decided to leave. Just what you can say about those relationships and, and your family and building off of that to go a little bit deeper and how important that is to you. And when you talk about family, why the Orange family of alumni is so important. So you asked about my relationship with those guys and how it was leaving. Um, it was tough. It was hard. I really grew a relationship with Muschamp. You know, and uh, which I'm trying to do some things with Muschamp. But I grew a good relationship with Muschamp. So that was tough. Glenn Schumann is the guy that made the call. And we got like a running joke. He called like two years ago. And we always walked by, glad you made that call. Because I was losing at this other school. And then I got to go there and win a championship. And then Kirby Smart is just one of the most competitive guys I've ever been around. And he's taught me so much in two years. I mean, this dude, when I first got there, I tried to sit as far away from him as possible. He said, no, Frank, you told me. And you was going to get the best players. And I told you I was going to help you become a head coach. Sit right here, buddy. So I had to sit literally right next to him for two straight years. And I got a section in here that says smart notes. It's just like that and beat it and beat it and beat it. And he was just really good. I mean, his wife is an amazing lady, Miss Mary Beth. She did a great job with my wife and just showing her stuff. And then his son, little Andrew, and the twins. I mean, so that, that relationship and the relationships with all the other guys on the staff, I always keep them because it was genuine. You know, there's some relationships with some guys that wasn't real, so it's always hard to leave it. But when you're leaving for better, you know, if to better yourself, then it becomes simple. Um, and then coming here, like, why not? See, that's the thing I look at, like, why wouldn't I? Like I said, I read this one thing because my wife, she, like, sometimes to look at stuff. And then my son, I'm like, yo, leave me alone. But they was like, why would he want to leave Georgia to come here? <laughs> I said, you see how much money this man offered me? <laughs> but... Uh, but uh, <laughs> But um, it, it, you know, <laughs> but uh, it's nothing like being able to run your own program. And then I would have had a chance to do what was I seen done before. Like my first college game, I went to Rutherford Stadium and watched them play. So then I get a chance to come mimic that and see that. And we would watch on TV because see me growing up, uh, it was 
Syracuse, Miami, Florida State, like they were all winning. Virginia Tech was good, like all those guys were up. So I was like, dang, I get a chance to go back and bring it back where it was. And then with such a guy that showed me, I got a letter in my office where George DeLeon pulled me in one day and he said, listen, you're too good. You need to work with other staffs. You need to get better schematically. Keep busting your butt and doing this. You're in a good place, uh, place in your career. Now go. He was like, now go. And he said it about three times. And I looked at him, and we were together. And it changed my career, man. I left from Baylor and went to Temple. Everybody thought I was crazy. But I knew he knew what he was talking about. And I went from Baylor to Ruck, I mean, from uh, Temple to Rutgers and then Rutgers to Georgia. And now I'm your head football coach because I listen to a bright man. So relationships mean a lot to me, man. What's up, man? I'm going to start picking because it's going a little bit. <laughs> What's going on? There you go. You're right there. You're right there. Thank you very much, Coach. Yeah. Uh, Mark Frank, Associated Press. What are your plans for the next month in terms of coaching the bowl game, getting your staff together, and how much time you'll be spending here as opposed to Georgia? Are you totally done with Georgia at this point? See, I told them last night, I told my wife before, like right after we got done with the um, SEC championship, which is just like sucks. Like after we got done with that, I, I was just like, I, I'm the head coach of Syracuse. Yeah, I won't go back. I'm here to support my guys. I'm here to do everything possible. I hope he's still giving me my check because we did help make the game. But I'm uh, I'm completely here. I'm locked in here. I'm uh, we're recruiting. We're trying to have an official visit coming up this weekend. Um, we're full tilt, man. And I got I got. I mean, this guy right here, man. Just the support that we got. Like it makes it just makes me feel comfortable. I mean, I know he's tired of me calling. I call him about 25 times a day, just constantly calling and ringing. But the support you get from the athletic director, the help that it comes. So like, I got to be full in because they're fully in. So I don't want them to think that I'm half stepping in. You know, we full in. I'm full go Syracuse. Our bowl game. I'll be watching us. I can't wait till we practice. I can't wait till we out there practice. That's all I'm looking forward to being able to watch this practice, evaluate the players, evaluate the coaches, just giving the opportunity of seeing everybody. But I'll be here watching this practice and see how all that stuff going. If they start trying to make it too much about me, then I'm going to step back and I'm going to let the coaches coach. And, you know, I'll watch from a window or watch from afar. But I want it to truly be about the kids. I want to see them develop. I told them that yesterday these 15 practices are invaluable. Like, you got to be able to use those practices. Like, get yourself better. Lock in, get treatment, do all the things you're supposed to. Dominate classes next week, but there. But um, I'm I'm here. Like I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I was joking about the pick. <laughs> there you go, man. I was joking about the pick. She right here. Hi, Coach Emily Riker, Syracuse.com. Just wondering what your timeline is for hiring your assistant coaching staff and how deep into that process you are right now. Oh, I'm deep into it. Should we just we just got the best uh. Second, we just got the best coordinator in the country. Elijah Robinson's coming here already, you know. So, I mean, you guys should be clapping about that. That was big. Okay. That was big. Um, just having a chance to get him, man. We grew up together. And I, I told you, he, he got me involved in football and, and got me wanting to, like, coach, involved in coaching. And, um, I mean, it was expensive. But um, we went all in. And uh, the athletic director, he was just all about making sure we get him because this guy, not only I think outside of myself, I, I tell him he's better than I am. This guy can recruit. This guy can coach. He's a great communicator. He's amazing X and O wise. And all the kids going to love him. So we need to take advantage of having him and make him feel comfortable here, guys, because he won't be here long. We're going to try to do everything we can to get three years out of this guy. So make sure you guys are. Let's treat him like to make sure he feels comfortable and this is his home. John, uh, Fran mentioned that he's well paid. Uh, is there uh, anything you're willing to uh, <laughs> share with us in terms of salary or? No, nah, no, nah, nah. I mean well paid in reference to welfare <laughs> stuff that I'm getting. I'm fine, buddy. He's going to be buying me dinner. <laughs> so no in terms of terms. No, it's, Chris, you know, I've said the past couple of years, right, we've looked to make strategic investments in the program. We've done that. And where can we get the best, you know, return on that, right? And I also said two weeks ago that, you know, the programs who spend the most don't always win the most, right? It's how you spend and to be really, really smart. And that's, and we spend a tremendous amount of time doing that. And that's what we'll do. And I'm Chris Carlson from the Post, Syracuse Post Standard Fran. I forgot that part, and I'm sorry. Um, and, and John, you've also referenced Fran's vision um, a couple times, and in terms of the minute specifics, are there a couple that you're willing to share that really impressed you? A couple things that 
of those specifics. I just uh, the, the entire you know how he laid out you know how he laid out the schedule for, literally for the year, right? <laughs> I mean by every segment of the season, and the focus on academics and people talk about it, but the focus and as I said in my remarks. His first meeting after the team meeting yesterday was with our academic support staff, and it went long because he's late for dinner. And it was good because with the academic support staff. So I also said he's authentic. He's authentic and he's genuine, and that's what, you know, that's what you see. And you see that vision. And I, I, talked to, I talked to Kirby Smart the day after Thanksgiving for about 25 minutes. And Kirby could not say enough positive things about Coach Fran. And I talked to Matt Rule as well. And again, and everybody else I spoke to was the same. It was the same feedback, right? Really good football mind, great at building relationships, great communicator, authentic, genuine, cares about his players. Um, so you can you combine all that, and then the fact he is, he's a great recruiter. And I remember a story when I was at ESPN. We hired, we hired Jim Calhoun to be an analyst and I had lunch with Jim and he said, you know, when I first got into coaching, I thought it was 90% me and 10% the players. He said, it's the opposite. Yeah. You need really good coaches, really good players okay. make better coaches. Coach, we've got some great student media here. We've got Thomas from the Daily Orange. How y'all doing? Uh, good, hi, Henry O'Brien from the Daily Orange. Uh, I just, you talked about earlier just what your message is to recruits, but what are your messages to just some of the coaches that are considering coming to Syracuse and just why come here? So do you want to know about to recruits or to coaches? Uh, my message is we're going to compete. You know, you want to be with a coach that's going to push you, that help elevate you. You know, um, I'm all about having guys come. Like, I talk to every guy that might want to come in to be a QC. I'm talking to the guys on the staff. If that's all you want to do, this won't be the place for you. I want guys that want to, do, like, want to advance. They want to move up. That want to be guys, like I talked a second ago about Elijah Robinson, who I played with in high school. I want him to go be a head football coach. Like, I think it's my job to equip and inspire the entire staff. So I want guys that want to move up, that want to advance, that's going to challenge each other to be able to go. So, like, my message to them is to come because I'm going to get you where you want to get to. The same way I do it with the guys, with the players, I can also do that with adults. Like, uh, like we spoke earlier, I'm from a rough city. So as a ninth grader, I was able to tell guys that ended up being pretty treacherous in the street what to do. So I know how to get guys to be able to pay attention and get them to be able to want to be here because coming here, it's going to only elevate your career. Look what I talked about, Deleon. Talked about Pascaloni. Let's go to all those coaches that was here before. Steve Adazio, who's been a head coach all over. Great football coach. There's a lot of guys that came here and careers started here, and they helped them move on because that's what they were supposed to do. So I'm going to just try to go mimic what Pascaloni did as much as I can. Appreciate that. This is uh, Wyatt Miller, also from the Daily Orange. We talked a lot about you uh, and your recruiting mm -hmm. and – how you're able to do that. What are your messages to kind of the families of those recruits and how are you able to make them feel like their kids' futures are, are in the right hands? A little something my son and I'm like, I'm a, did you pray today? Nah, it's a, uh, I mean, they do that on TikTok, but I, uh, I just talk to them about life. Like, we have a family. I know what you want, you know? Like, you want your child to get educated. You want your child to get closer to Christ. You want them to go to college. You want them to get a degree to be successful when they leave college, you're hoping they don't come back home. Like <laughs> they had to. So um, I just know what you want. And my message to them is like, yo, we're going to be there for your child. You're going to be able to call me at all times. See, what happens is coaches recruit. But once the kids get to school, you stop talking to the parents. That doesn't happen with me. That's why she always mad I'm on the phone. I'm talking to your parent the entire time. See, I've known you for, they've, they've been around you for 17, 18 years of your life, right? I just got to meet you a year and a half ago, maybe at max. I don't know enough about you. I need to talk to the people that know who you are, that know what triggers you, that know what makes you act one way or another way. So I got to stay in constant contact with them, and I let them know when he's doing well, when he's doing bad, when we need to pick it up. See, I'm still making those calls. So if you act mature, then I'm going to treat you extremely mature. If you're not mature, then your parents going to know everything like you're in elementary school. You know?
Uh, Coach Jesse McWilliams, Spectrum News One, first of all, congratulations, welcome to Syracuse. You mentioned um, taking time to watch practice, evaluate the players over the next two and a half weeks or so. But how much will you hit the recruiting trail as well and kind of, you know, balance, I guess, both worlds? I'm hitting the trail tonight. I'm going to meet with most of the players. I'm going to meet with a lot of coaches. And I'm going out tonight. I'll start tonight. And then I'll be back in. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday early, come back in here. But we're going to out recruit. You see, this is what happens, right? Guys become head coaches, and they stop recruiting. That's why I got the job. We all understand that. So I'm not going to stop that. Why would you stop what you're good at? I'm going to try to get better at that. Because I always think you can continuously grow, continuously get better. My son's 19, so I'm kind of knowing what the young guy's thinking. I got 11-year-old, so I got a lot of time. I'm going to get all the best players because I'm going to know how you're supposed to think. But um, I'm not stopping that. So I'm going to be on a recruiting trail. Right before I came in here, I had a call. There's some different things I'm setting up. But I'm on a trail uh, tonight. And then I'll be back tomorrow to meet up with the players some more, get with different guys on the staff. And then I'll be back out Wednesday. But I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to stop recruiting. So. Make sure you understand that and let that be known to all the coaches where they think, how oh, we got him off the road. No, you don't. That's why we got a lodger. That's why we got a lodger. Thank you. Uh, coach, right here. Uh, Mike Ostrowski, newsmagician.com. Uh, you have the opportunity to coach in the dome. It's one of the most unique home field advantages in college football. How do you plan to continue that tradition of you know, relying on the crowd noise, relying on the big defensive stops going forward? Just by the way we play, I think you're going to love our style of football. So, and, and then I'm going to be talking to you the whole from here all the way through. I'm calling you out, be at the game. I'm calling you out, be at the spring game. Make sure we're around. Make sure we're there. Alumni, just come out. I'm calling you out. For it to be packed, then we need everybody here. That's kind of on you because you get to see them. You got more followers than me probably, right? So let's make sure we kind of get them out there, though. But um, we plan on it, it being packed. You know, I plan on everybody from where I'm from trying to make it down here to go. Everybody from Syracuse, our whole community. I told you earlier we were going to do a lot of community service. And I'm not going to do community service for the cameras. So I'll be out there on my own. Like, that's what I do. So I'm going to be out there to take care of that. So as they see, like, oh, that's the coach. Dang, cleaning up our block. Oh, that's the coach that's over there helping out at the Salvation Army or doing different things at the YMCA. I'm going to naturally make all of them want to come and want to be around because it's their spot. So filling the, the dome is something that naturally happens because you guys love it. I just come to get to be a part of this. I get to be a part of a great tradition that I'm going to try to make sure I uphold the standard and then try to go above and beyond. Coach Dominic Chapone, NunesMagician.com. Likewise, also congratulations on being the new head coach. Uh, for starters, obviously, been a very chaotic few weeks just trying to kind of get you situated and all that. What's been the process like adjusting to coming up here to Syracuse, getting to get your face around campus? And can you also speak to the personal experience of being a black coach and what does that mean coming from your upbringing and the values that you can bring to the program? Those are some really good questions, man. Uh, post, it was hard at first. When I got the job, the first thing I did, the search firm guy called me and he said, uh, hey, you got it. I said, are you serious? He said, how you feel? I said, can we pray? And we just prayed. I just prayed that it go the right way. Me and him talked on the phone, got some things right. And, um, but I was still obligated to helping us go out and play in the SEC championship. So I was trying to do both. Wasn't sleeping that much. But I was just locked in on both. And then no matter how much I tried to, let me get in my folder right now and do this with Syracuse. I seen those kids coming by and like, dang, I owe this to these guys to give everything I had. So it was tough because I was trying to do two things the entire time and I had to be devoted to that program because that's what I signed up for. But um, afterwards, you know, just getting the chance to, at the end of the week, it started getting a little rough. Coach uh, Smart told me stay home Friday. I got to interview a lot of people, do a lot of stuff. Friday was very productive for me. Friday night I was back at the uh, hotel with the players and getting ready for Saturday. But as soon as the game was over Saturday, I was hurt. But I was also happy that I like, dang, I'm about to go take over this program. Like, we about to go shop the country. My wife and I'm going to tell you, I'm competitive, man. So like, I got to win at everything. If you can't, you gun faster than me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I want to win. Um, and then just being a black man, being a head football coach here, I mean, just being a black man, period. Not just a head coach, but being a black father. Being able to show how that's done the right way, you know? Being a black husband, doing that the right way, making sure that she's comfortable all the time. And I mean, just all that, it's a lot that comes with being a black man. I think it's a lot that comes with being a white man. 
You know, like we gotta uphold them. It's about us raising the community and bringing the people behind us, showing them that, hey, this is what we're supposed to do. This is how you're supposed to do it. Now, do I know that there's a little more only because I am a black man? Yeah, I'm cool with that. I can handle that. Um, and I'm excited about that because I'm gonna open the door for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do it right. Ain't gonna read no dumb stuff about me. I ain't gonna embarrass this man. Why would I mess his name up? I can't mess his name up in the paper. So I'm gonna do this thing the right way because it's bigger than me. It's a lot of people that came before me that didn't get the opportunity, and there's gonna be a lot that come after me that because you act similar to Fran Brown, it's a great chance you're gonna get the job. So I'm gonna bust my butt and I'm gonna do this the right way, guys. I can assure you that. I actually have a question for both of you. Fran, I wanna start with you and just kinda of play off that question. Uh, what do you anticipate, I guess big picture, you talked about the here and now, but big picture, what do you anticipate will be the biggest transition for you slash challenge as you settle into your first head coaching job? Dealing with the media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, you, you just never know. Like, you can't really tell that. Like, I, I wish I could go ask Tom Landry what was his biggest challenge when he first became it. Like, I'm gonna do a lot of scenarios and situations in practice to get us ready, have us on different teams, me being able to call it, practice more like a game more so because I am a first time head coach. So just do those things so that way you're kind of ready for the game. But you never really know what's going to be the biggest challenge until it comes. But I know this. I'm going to have the players' heart, and they're going to play for me. So regardless, we're going to all be together. And hopefully at the end of the game, we up a whole lot more than they are. So it won't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, you can't, I can't really answer that. Like there's no real one answer for that question. I just got to put us in scenarios and prep, and prep us so that way when the game comes, it becomes second nature, you know? And practice is the way that I can take care of that, just by practicing and outworking other guys in practice. No, that's a good answer. Uh, John, to follow up on that, uh, you, you were up here two weeks ago and you said, I want somebody who's either got head coaching experience or, you know, has been a coordinator of Power Five. Obviously, you know, Fran did not fit that bill, but he checks a lot of other boxes, and I think we're learning today, you know, wh what really uh, won you over. Can you speak to that, though, can aside I, from the Can vision? I cut him off real quick one thing? Sure. I wasn't a coordinator because I didn't want to be. I don't want to be on the entire side of the ball. Me and him had a discussion before. There was another school that wanted to hire me to go do that, and I had opportunities before. I can't touch the entire team if I'm the defensive coordinator. I got too much on my brain. I got a head coach cussing me out about all this other stuff and things that went on. I can touch the entire team at the position I had. I've never just recruited corners or DBs. If you go look at my resume, I recruited quarterbacks, linemen, D linemen, linebackers. Every position there is, I have one of those guys in the NFL. So the reason I wasn't a coordinator, because that wasn't my vision. Like I talked about mission earlier, right? I was on a mission and I wasn't trying to do what, no disrespect, what the media or everybody says you have to do, like you gotta climb these ranks. So I didn't wanna do that. That wasn't something I thought about. So I talked to my uncles, and they said, if that's what you want, Neff, go get it. I said, I just, they kept telling me, I had a little cousin that loves it. He was like, you're gonna have to be a coordinator. And a lot of you like, yeah, I feel you, cuz. I really don't be wanting to talk to him no more, cuz he was like against it. But um, that's why, so I don't want y'all to put that on him, like he switched it up. That was totally like I didn't want to be a coordinator and he kind of knew that from the coaches that he talked to that they want me to be the coordinator. I could have, that I do do game plans at Georgia, but there's a lot of things that I've done that would be equivalent to being a coordinator. It's just I can't touch everybody being a coordinator, you know. No, I, I hear that. Uh, Steve, yeah. I, just, I would just add a couple things is, is you know, where he's worked and who, who Coach Fran has worked with, right? Um, you know, Matt Rule, and he's been in different situations, right? He's helped build programs, right? He's helped resurrect programs. You know, went to Rutgers, right? Um, you know, Coach Ciano's the one coach who's had success at Rutgers, so he's part of that Big Ten program. And then he goes to Georgia, he's done it as well as anybody the past two years, and really impactful when I talked to, to, to Kirby Smart and to Matt Rule and what they said about Coach Fran, and that he is, you know, he is ready. He's more than ready. You know, the, I, I, know, I won't say it, but I know how much of the game plan you did at Georgia on the defense, because Kirby told me. And, and by the way, Coach Smart could not have been more gracious through this, because he said, yeah, whatever you need, what, you know, that, hey, we, you know, I'm here to support Coach Fran. So, you know, I owe, I owe some thanks to, uh, to, Kirk, to Coach Smart, because he's in a situation <laughs> He's coaching a conference championship game, obviously, you know, biggest, arguably the biggest game prior to the playoffs, and he, was, he could not have been more gracious. Coach 
Fran, welcome to Syracuse, man. Tommy Slade, XCMY Central. Um, interim coach, Nunzio Campanelli, two Jersey guys. Did you have a previous relationship with him before this on the recruiting trail, and do you see a future relationship with him? Uh, we did have a previous relationship, um, but I've worked with him at Rutgers. Um, he's a Campanelli. I mean, their name is known in New Jersey when it comes to football. All that his father done, I mean, arguably probably the best coach to ever be alive in New Jersey with football. I mean, he got a brother that coaches at a high school. He got another brother that coaches in the NFL. It's actually two of them in high school. So, I mean, the Campanellis, you can't, if you know New Jersey football, you understand it, you know them. We did have a relationship. We are going to continue a relationship. So, if you ask him, is he going to be on the staff? Yeah, he is. <laughs> I think he's a heck of a coach. I mean, he went out there, and because of him, we get to watch 15 more practices, and we get one more game. So, he did a good job. And he, I, I, I just love how he was able to keep the staff together. And it wasn't like he'd been here. He just came. There was other guys on the staff before him. So for him to come step in and just play his role, he understands his role, and he doesn't care about who gets the clout or who gets what. He just came in, locked in, and done exactly what uh, John asked him to do. So um, I do plan on working with him. He will be on our staff. And I'm excited to have Campanelli stay here. We've got a couple questions in the front row here. Coach Mark Frank again from the AP. I wonder if we can go back to, to the ninth grade again, and you're in the Meadowlands. Can you tell me where you were sitting in the stadium? And when you're watching the, well, generally, I, I don't need to know the seat number and row number, but generally, and what, so, and what really stuck out in your mind when you're watching that game about Syracuse specifically? What indelible mark, you know, left, you, left with you? I mean, it was the fact of coming from South Jersey, it was Ron Dane versus Donovan Darius. So just, and you know, we from Camden, so I was all like, yeah, Don gonna do this. I never got the chance to meet Don before. He came and spoke to everybody at the school, but we lived like similar blocks, so it was pretty cool. Um, just the fact that us, like Donovan Darius was playing. Like, and, you know, he was good in track, he was good in football, and he came to Syracuse and done it. I said, I would say, my back was like towards the field. I mean, I can't really tell you that, to be honest. I, was, I know where I was at, <laughs> but I remember us all. Yeah, well, so it was. But I know we were all um, just playing and joking and laughing about it. And we were arguing with the Overbrook kids because that's where Ron Dane went. And they had some players. And then we were able to come back and play them in football. And we ended up beating them. And I just remember us saying, we beat y'all twice. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> Cannon beat them and then we beat them. So that was good. That was, my, that was literally my first time going to a college game. And the you know, first game was getting to see them. So it's a good question. Also with Sports Illustrated, uh, you mentioned that you want to run the football. You have a very good running back on your roster right now, LaQuint Allen, also a Jersey guy. Mm -hmm. Just interested what your initial conversations have been with players like LaQuint on your current roster. Um, we got to tighten up in all aspects of our life. LaQuint's a great football player. He's a good kid. He called me and talked to me about other things. I just told him, like, Yo, who you are now, I think you can be an even better player. What you're doing now, I think you're going to do even better. You know, we just talked about a lot. We talked about life. We talked about, you know, I think it's already out, whatever. He had a father passed away a little while ago, which was heartfelt to him. We talked about praying. I said, I want you in my office three times a week, and we got to pray together. You know, I want to make sure that you locked in on that. Um, and we just talked about him being the best version of himself on a consistent basis. You know, the football part, that's going to come with it. They know that's what I like. But it was more so life. And how can I help you be the best version of you? How can I make sure you stay healthy? Like, how much are you in treatment? So those are the questions that I'm asking guys. I'm not asking, like, hey, what you want to run? Hey, what's your favorite play? That's between him and the offensive coordinator who will be here pretty soon. But that's between those guys. But I was just focused on uh, him and his life. You know, that's why I get to be the head coach, because I can make sure that his life is right. Because, like, if you understand and know it, you could be doing really, really well in football, but you ain't living right off the field. And I'm not saying he isn't, so don't try to write that down and say he said LaQuint not living right. I'm saying overall, I want to make sure that their lives are right. Because when their lives are right, we're going to get the best version of them. Not just in football, guys. They're only going to play football for three to ten years. But they're going to be educated for 100. That's going to live on through their children. Their kids going to see that degree on the wall. Then their kids' kids going to see it. And then the tradition continues to go. Like we talk about it in my family. You know, I was kind of one of the first to really go get my bachelor's degree and be able to do that. And now we look back at it, guys. I ain't just break no curse. I shattered that mug. It ain't coming back. So I want to make sure that they on the same backs with that. Let's stay in the front row here. 
I coach Peter Elliott with Citrus TV, the student television station on campus. You've talked about your vision for the program, but what like practically will a week of practice look like for you? Will you emphasize work in the weight room, work on the field, in pads, out of pads? What will a week of practice under Fran Brown look like ahead of I mean, the game on Saturday? That, that's like a, a pro, that's a wide question to ask. I mean, of course we're gonna lift, we're gonna play, we're gonna practice, we're gonna do all those things, but I mean, we're gonna hit. So the thing that's gonna be different with us, we're gonna have pads on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Everybody don't do that. That's how you win. Cause that's where I came from and we won. So we will have pads on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now what's gonna happen, we'll see. And I believe that if we do that, because if you look at Syracuse and where we're at right now, Right there, when you watch some of those games, guys, I believe it's the fourth quarter. I believe it's our weight room. We got to get stronger. I believe we got to eat right. And I'm not saying the food isn't there. So don't take anything I'm saying out of context, guys. Because if you do, when you take it out and you try to say, France, they don't got food or they don't got this, I'm never going to talk to you again. <laughs> so, so make sure we take this the right way. All right? But um, we're just going to get better at everything, you know. We are going to practice. We are going to lift. But it's going to be a lot of competitive stuff. Um, I like to run the ball. I want to practice in the afternoon, but right now we can't do that. So we'll talk about where we're going to be at. But um, we're going to we're gonna make sure it's the best way. You know what I mean, we're going to do what's best for the players at all times. The most important thing are the players. And he said that earlier. It's about the Jimmys and the Joes. It has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with all the coaches. We're just going to equip and inspire them. But we got to have the right players, and we got to make sure that they're comfortable, they're mentally ready. Like, we got a great mental health specialist on, on uh, campus. We got to make sure they're right with that. I talked to the kids yesterday. I said, hey, guys, I want you all to be comfortable of going and talk to somebody if you're not feeling right, because I'm not educated in that area. I'm not prescribed to help you with that. I'm prescribed to help you with football, to help you become a man, to help you do those things. But when it comes to something mental, I need you to speak with somebody. Because we all do. I mean, I know we all think that we're perfect, but we're kind of not, guys. There's only one person <laughs> to walk this earth that was perfect. And he, he, he died for all of our sins. So when I look at it, guys, I just want to make sure that we all understand, that you understand, that we're going to practice the way everybody else practice, but we're going to hit. I love contact. Like, I love the contact. Like, it inspires me. So just so you know, we will hit. Two more questions. Let's go to Dan. Coach, you, you spoke about the importance of the alumni. There's a bunch of Syracuse football alumni in the room right now. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say to them as you look out to the crowd and see them? Come to practice. I want to see you at practice. I need you around. These guys need to know who you are. I want you at practice. I'm going to have four practices that are for alumni. I want you guys at practice. I'd rather have you at practice than have your money. I want your money too, though. But, <laughs> but come to practice. Like, we just want you at practice, man. I want to get your thoughts. I want to know how you feel. I want to know what you see. Because this is your program, and it's going to go on. And it's nothing like being able to go to work and being able to talk trash about your team and know how well they're doing and know what's going on. So I want everybody at practice. I don't care when you played or where it was, whatever era you were in, you are welcome if you were on this uh, football team. I want you guys at practice, and I need to see you at practice. If you come to practice, you're allowed to come to my office and complain. If you don't come, shut it up, bro. <laughs> Last question. Chris, you had a question? Um, Fran, you mentioned hearing, you know, why – would you go to Syracuse? Um, when you reached out to John, what did you know um, that made you want the job? And was there anything in terms of a financial resource that he promised you that you needed to hear to take it? I wouldn't really make no promises. We just talk like men. And he listened. We talk to a lot of guys that are in his position. They don't really want to listen or want to hear anything you have to say. But he talked like a man to me and he listened to me. And I knew that with his background from all the years he worked with ESPN and all the stuff that he's done before, I also knew that this would be a good place for me because I would have someone that I could follow. I would have someone that I could go to, that I could talk to about different situations because he's been a leader of men for a long time, men and women. Sorry, no disrespect, but he's been a leader of men and women for a long time. So it was also had to be the right fit for me because, guys, like you said earlier, I am a black young guy that's become a head coach. I can't fail. So I had to be with the right guy at the right place with the right chancellor that wants it all to work out the right way. So we just talked like men, and he just told me what he wanted. He told me what he was looking for. I was telling him what I wanted, 
And everything just kept matching along. It was almost like when my wife saw me and fell in love with me the first time. It was just like, wow. You know what I'm saying? But it all just matched up, man. And I just felt comfortable that I could go to him about anything. You know, I felt comfortable that if we needed something for the players, he wasn't going to say no. And that's one thing that I asked him. You could tell me no about a lot with me, but don't tell me no about my players or about the staff. And he was comfortable with it. He said, yeah, we're going to do what it takes because he wants to win a champ. He's a winner. I mean, you don't sit in this seat and be doing this if you can't win. This guy's a winner. He's been winning his whole life, so that's why we're up here to do it. But um, there was no, like, promises. It was just, Frank, this is what it is. And he listened to me, and he heard my vision. And he saw it just as clear as I see it. So now I'm the head football coach. Coach John, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this morning. Go Orange. Cheers.